This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. All right, video time. Today, we're gonna build a battery. Okay, so as you know, we have these JP3 cells. They're LGs and they can do a lot of power and they are pouch and they come in these big modules that they're not welded together. So because they're not welded together, it gives us the opportunity to rearrange and build our battery packs that suits our needs, whatever you want. You want a 4S like this one right here? Okay, I made these little PCB bus bars so that you can easily just screw them together. And basically you just use screws to sandwich the, uh, the bus bars here. So here's a little, those are the tabs, the cell tabs in there, and they're being squeezed between the bottom board and the top board with this screw. This screw is just sandwiching both and then applying mechanical pressure. And then that's how the power gets transmitted from one cell to the next, right? So this is just a quick one that we did. We did one without these holders, just in case where people uh, want to use, uh, make a battery pack that is very, very compact or the most compact that you can get it, right? But then also this one right here, I haven't published this yet, uh, but this is the, the 4S one that has for the holders, right? But along with that, of course, other people have been asking for other voltages because obviously that's the beauty about these that they can come in every voltage. So here, what I have is now the 48 volt version. This is 14 cells in series two cells in parallel so it's 20 you know 14 yeah 28 cells is that what it is yes 28 cells here in this module right and so they're two in parallel and then 14 in series so this board right here now what allows you to do is very easily very easily put this on top of the 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 bus bars the existing bus bars the ones that are there right and then just screw, put screws through it and self, you know, self tappers and then tap right into that bus bar, the copper and aluminum bus bar that's, it's a bimetal bus bar. And then do the same thing by mechanical force, uh, sandwich the tabs, the cell tabs in there. And then this is how you can build your modules, um, your 48 volt modules, right? And then from there, you know, we're putting these little connectors here. So now you can put a BMS, the leads, the, the the balance leads right here, right? But then also we have these connectors in here. What we're gonna do, what we're trying to do here is work, figure out a way to put this because now this becomes a module. Look, let me uh, show it to you here. If we go this way like this. So that module right there is two modules put together, screwed, in these compression plates. So now it's uh, 28 times two is 56 cells. This would be about 14 kilowatt hours, I think. And the beauty about this is that it's roughly the same size as 14 of these cells, which is uh, the standard right now, right? This is like lithium iron phosphate, 300 amp hours, the 280s to 320, I think that's what they run. And so because they're basically almost the same length and the same width, it will allow us to put two of these, um, two of these modules like that inside of one of these boxes. These boxes were, were developing these boxes for the lithium iron phosphate, but now it turns out that we could just throw that in there. And why would you want to do that? Well, there's several reasons why you would want to do that. One, these batteries are way more affordable than lithium iron phosphate. Uh, and they're way, way more powerful. And so if for, for some reason you have an application that requires a ton of power, right? This is 14 kilowatts. You can do, I think it's like a 10 C cell or something. So I just looked at a new sheet where these cells, there's there's no spec sheets on these cells and that's, that's a bad thing. But the information out there on the internet, it's coming out and uh, we saw some documentations that was Comparing these to other LG cells and these cells was saying that it can do uh, pulse. It could do pulse 720 amps for 10 seconds, I think that's what it says. Or was it burst or pulse? I think it was burst versus pulse, right? Um, and one of them was two, like 300 amps, close to 300 amps, and the other one was 700 and something. 
which is higher than what we have seen before. Uh, EV West had tested these and they have reported just that these could do 500 amps for two minutes. They tested them at that much and each cell, right? And so now you're talking about 500 a thousand so now you're you're talking about a module here that can do 2000 amps at 52 volts volts that's like 100 kilo 104 kilowatts of power so for some reason you had an application that doesn't require a huge battery it just requires a ton of power like to start some big machinery or something right this battery right here could give you like <laughs> up to 100 kilowatts of course, you would have to build it in a way that, you know, the, your bus bars and your connectors and your stuff would be able to handle that, right? But the cells can do it. And so if maybe if that's your application, this is why you want to use these batteries instead of, you know, lithium or phosphate. To do the same thing with lithium or phosphate, well, you would have to build maybe like 10 of those boxes or, you know, seven, six, six of those uh, boxes of lithium or phosphate that are, by the way, and only the like 280s because those are rated at 1C. The the 314s, they're rated at half a C. So then you would need twice as much of that to be able to kind of put that in there. Um, so so that's one reason. The other reason is that they are uh, more affordable. These are because these cells come out of a failed project, right? And so they're surplus. You're not paying the full price. Of these. these batteries are really, really expensive. If you wanted to buy them new, you know, someone bought these for a lot of money you know, our, you know, it was a government project that failed and you could bet that these, they were paying 75, almost a hundred dollars to sell for these. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if like the stuff that we got is over like a million dollars worth of batteries, right? And now we're going to sell it for, I don't know, $40,000 or something. Uh, you know, so you're, you're paying pennies on the dollar for like the original price of this. And so this, we can sell them super cheap and still make money because they, you know, these were very, very cheap. We bought them at auction and stuff. So these cells, they have those two things that are very com uh, compelling. Uh, there's some downsides to it. Like, you know, if they're not as compact, these are not as compact as the lithium iron phosphate, which is a weird thing to say, because li usually lithium iron phosphate is the biggest, heaviest lithium uh, chemistry on there. But these are a little bit bigger and heavier than lithium iron phosphate. But again, that's because they're optimized for power. Right. And so the other thing is that these are a little bit more dangerous. These do are the ones that do catch on fire from time to time, as opposed to the lithium iron phosphate, which are, you know, they're, they're proving to be super, super safe and super long lasting. And so I think the, li the life span, the cycle life on these is going to be is going to be good because something that's rated for 10 C and if you use it at one C, for example, then you're going to get 10,000 cycles out of these cells also. No problem. Right. Uh, so I think those are the only two downgrades. Uh, these are less safe. They are a little bit more reactive. But if you use a high quality BMS, in this case, we're making all of the all the products that like all the little boards and stuff and the bus bars and the stuff that we're doing it to accommodate a JK BMS, which seems to be one of the better ones out there in the market. Everybody's using them, right? And so obviously, this these boxes will will be able to support that and you will be able to put it in a box like this and then use it for your application. So anyways, let's go to the drawing program and then let me show you how I made this board right here and then where you can order all these parts. Now come like, just like all these projects that PCB Way sponsors, they're open source. And so you'll be able to uh, download the files and print your own. You can modify them. You can order them in your favorite PCB shop in China or in the States or anywhere in the world for that matter. So there you go. Let's go check out how we put this project together. <laughs> 